Now, whichever way you decide to take classes, whether it's uh, online, uh, in the school, group classes, there are pluses and minuses, pros and cons. So uh, let's go out there and we'll discuss a little, well, some of the challenges that we've been finding. You know, after the success of last week, um, we've kind of reached a point, and we actually discussed this in our lesson yesterday, where the, it doesn't seem to make much sense to learn much more new stuff this week. We've covered a lot of ground, um, and I've done a, I think I've done a good job of actually taking the time to review and memorize things, commit stuff to memory. And, um, but now that we've only got a couple of days left of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, of the program, the opportunity cost of learning more and more new stuff starts to grow because I think what's really valuable for me now is actually taking the opportunity that I've got to be in Thailand and to speak and to practice the stuff that I've already learned is um, like that's extremely valuable now and that's disappearing because as soon as I get on the plane and go back to London I don't have that anymore so we've decided now that we are kind of just on, we're in practice mode now, in revision mode. So, so what, what that's meant is that my teacher has had to kind of really adapt based on the feedback she's getting from me. Uh, yesterday I went into class and I was, I was really tired, I couldn't focus and I think it was probably, she could probably tell that. And so we've started doing some very cool things to, to practice, um, which are, again, like one of the benefits of taking these face-to-face -face lessons. So this morning for about 45 minutes, uh, she brought in a different teacher and uh, I'd never met the teacher before so we sat down and we had a conversation mostly between the two of us but also my main teacher would kind of feed in things and uh, help out from time to time and so I had the opportunity to sit down and practice with a new teacher for an extended period which was great. What we did after that was then we actually in the second half of the lesson in the second hour we got up and we actually went for a walk around the area so we went to a shopping mall uh, she had a couple of tasks to do and she got me to do them for her like uh, you know we practically rehearsed what I would say in Thai and I go into the shop and I do that I have, to, I have to deliver a package to a doctor really interesting and uh, but we just changed the dynamic so rather than being sat face to face with paper we got up and we walked around and you know movement and exercise brings a different dimension to what you're doing because you know I was um, we were speaking and walking around we didn't we left all the notebooks and the notes and the things at home and we were just talking and it was like you were using the language and as, as, as genuine and an authentic as authentic as an authentic as I saw <laughs> I'm forgetting my English now as authentic a way as possible uh, and that was really really great and uh, it's the kind of thing that you can really only do in a face-to-face -face lesson and most language schools don't have the time or the resources to actually do that either you know to bring in another teacher who happens to be free for, for 45 minutes so it's really a luxury very much um, when you are studying this intensively face to face, you need to adapt, you need to be flexible, uh, both the student and the teacher, and, and that's the way that you really make the most of it. Because I am starting to feel drained now after, after, two hour, after like almost two weeks of these two hour lessons. It's been, been great, but really have to be, keep thinking about how to maneuver and uh, correct course. 3 p.m., another traffic jam. So I just finished my speaking session with my with my Thai teacher, and I thought maybe it would be useful to tell a little bit more about what I exactly do during those hours. In the beginning, I've tried I've tried four Thai teachers, and I found someone that I really like, and you know that's fun to that's fun fun to talk to. Um, but then even after four or five classes didn't really know where to talk about anymore so therefore what I always do is I go to the internet and then if you just go to Google and you Google for 1,000 questions um, you, you, you find actually lists with questions that you can ask to strangers and also get to know each other better um, so that's always gives me new suggestions um, uh, for questions that I can ask my teacher or that my teacher can ask me and I think that's a way to to keep in, uh, to keep the conversations interesting and also to discuss new topics and learn new vocabulary, of course. Hi, Kun Diao. Kun Pagati, Kun Diao Pai Rang, was it? Hong Rang, right? No?
ห้องน้ำไหมปกติฉันไปโรงหนังคนเดียวดูชอบดูหนังคนเดียวค่ะที่อัมสเตอร์ดัมเหมือนกัน I also find grammar drills a very useful thing to do during my speaking sessions. So I'm always looking for teachers that actually use these grammar drills, um, but not every teacher knows what it is or knows about it. So then I always try to 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 teach my teacher how to teach me to teach my teacher how to use those grammar drills, basically. So what that is is, let's say uh, you're learning how to say um, in Bangkok it's hotter than in. Hong Kong. I don't know if that's true today, but um, so then first the teacher would tell me how to say that in Thai, and then she would say, "Okay, do you understand?" So how would you say, "My car is bigger than yours," or "This building is bigger than that building," for example, so that you can this way you get to practice the same structure over and over again, and that's called uh, that's called drills. And yeah, I find it a very useful way to learn new grammar. So you might have seen that during the classes, I always use spreadsheets, and where in which I write down new vocabulary. Um, what I always do in the beginning of each lesson is that I try to make sentences with the new vocabulary. I find it a good way to to activate the words that I've seen before and on the mean, and at the same time, I can also well. Practice to make full sentences and have the teacher there to help me with the intonation and the pronunciation. Um, well, those were a few tips, or well, at least a few things that I find very useful. You can try them out yourself as well. So, getting ready for another day in Bangkok here.